This is ground zero for the highway reroute movement, where some residents take turns to man the camp 24 hours a day. To make sure the temporary promise that the highway construction from Debi to Mondesi, or at least from Debi to Separia, as Minister of Works and Infrastructure Jack Warner said on Monday, will not proceed. The movement says it as often as they get a chance that they are not against the highway, but just part of it. And the movement has come up with a proposal that they think will satisfy both the communities and the government. From Debi, we want to go westward towards the highway um, in the vicinity of Paris. Which this here, as you can see, we are currently via its empty carny lands, um, natural highlands, which they can utilize. It will not impact on flooding. It's a much shorter distance, basically it's a, a couple of minutes apart. And it will not in, impact on flooding, it will not involve relocation of anyone. And it will seamlessly connect with the Point Fort and San Fernando Highway. The proposal they say will save the government about $4 billion, the reported cost of constructing the Debe to Mondesi section. But besides the financial saving, the reroute proposal they say will also prevent environmental damage. Harry Prasad Duki, like most residents in these areas, has lived here since birth, and so have his forefathers. He created this handmade map, he said, not just from personally knowing the land, but years of studying his surroundings. So this water don't go out the sea, so we have a backup here. And when you build this highway across, intersecting all these rivers, it tend to, it tend to raise the capacity of water level over the land surfaces, going beyond the normal level, and you're going to flood all these traces, the settlement areas you see here. Flooding, Mr. Duki tells us, will become a major problem. And Dr. Wayne Kabal Singh, an environmentalist who joined the fight and now heads the movement, agrees. A highway is supposed to bring connectivity. Connectivity, businesses, agricultural facilities, homesteads, um, towns, cities. It is not doing that. It is bringing disconnectivity. It's going to have permanent flooding. It's going to disconnect it in communities. It's going to go through a beautiful open gridlock pattern of streets. Um, it's going to destroy and alienate agricultural land. So that is disconnectivity. That's against the philosophy of what a highway is supposed to do. When the idea to build a highway was proposed in 2005, the residents' main concern then was just finding the truth on what was really going on. Bali Ramsu was one of many residents who initiated the protest. Very, very positive. We don't know where we're going next, what this government is going to do. They never tell me before what's going on and what's happening, all the location and what. They just put in and telling you that six lane has been going. I find that nonsense. Seven years later, they say it all seems unnecessary. All these communities are asking for, all these affected communities are asking for, is just for the roads to be fixed. I don't understand what is so difficult for the government to not comprehend this. This is such an easier alternative rather than uprooting over 400 homes. Dr. Kubla Singh tells us the movement continues their efforts to stop the construction of this part of the highway and is planning a major action that he says is supported by the trade unions, other political affiliates, professional institutions, including universities. The group is also taking up legal action against the government, but also pursuing the diplomatic route. They hope to speak to the Prime Minister personally. But their bigger wish is to one day soon be able to sleep soundly and without worry. Len Amadin Thornhill, TV6 News.